Good afternoon, everybody. I see YouTube has gone through some changes, huh? They took away the old dislike counter. You know what that means for my for my hater who who has twelve different accounts. Nobody can see it. Yeah, that's a fucking shame, huh? <laughs> hey, I always left it up. I left it up for everybody to see. I didn't care. Have at it. I was just reading my book, Madhouse. It's about insane asylums in New York State. It's about ten chapters? Man, maybe more. Sharon? Yeah, you know who Sharon is? That's wild. Sixteen chapters. Sharon is the one who runs Rolling Hills Asylum is where I have it opened up to. What about Sharon? I've never met Sharon. I've never been to Rolling Hills Asylum. It's only 40 minutes away. Mainly because I, it's too much money. She's charging way too much money. She's charging people like everybody's a TV show. And I just can't afford to go there. And I don't really want to go with a ton of people. I want to go with a couple, two, three people and just enjoy the night. I don't want to have to try to gain evidence through, through so many people that things, you know, if there's too many people, then things start getting messy, you know? There's noises, there's, you just got to be more mindful. So let's read a little bit about Rolling Hills. How many spirits are at Rolling Hills Asylum? I thought I heard many before I even asked. So just before Christmas in the year 1826, an official announcement was made in reference to a meeting of the Genesee County Board of Supervisors in Bethany in order to establish a county poorhouse. More often than not, those in need of a county poorhouse were the orphaned, destitute, elderly, physically handicapped, or those judged to be insane. They were supervised by representatives of local community which oversaw the support and housing of needy persons of all ages. Now I'm going to just skim through. It's not long, but there's some stuff in here that I don't think we need to go through. <clears throat> Institutions of this kind were commonplace in the United States during the first half of the 19th century. So there is a spirit there at Rolling Hills who everybody sees, and he's a great big tall guy. I don't know if he was a janitor or if he was somebody who actually stayed there. What is his name? Who is that tall spirit at Rolling Hills? Getting kind of quiet here. Do you know that these batteries, I just told Katie this too the other day. I got, this is my second box. I got it on 621. The first one I got a few months prior. Something happened to it. That was the better box though. <laughs> but the batteries have been in here since June. The same ones, and I use it constantly. I'll leave it on for one, two hours a day. How can that be? It makes no sense to me. But it's the truth. All right, a large multi-story brick building, originally a stagecoach tavern located near the Bethany Center and Raymond Roads, was chosen as the best location for the poorhouse. It also happened to be the exact geographical center of the, of the country at that time. Oh, I almost said county. No, it was county. I'm sorry. I can't see. On December 9th, 1826, the following announcement appeared in the Batavia Times newspaper. Notice is hereby given that the Genesee County Poorhouse will be ready for the reception of paupers on the first day of January, 1827. Overseers of the poor in several towns of the county of Genesee are requested in all cases of removal of paupers to the county poorhouse to send with them their clothing, beds, bedding, such 
other articles belonging to the paupers as, as may be necessary and useful to them. I'm sorry, I don't have glasses on, and I have a hell of a time seeing from zero to 24 inches. <laughs> and if I hold it way back, that's even harder. <laughs> so bear with me. The categories of persons who considered eligible for admission were habitual drunks, lunatic, were drunk tards, lunatics, one who by disease, grief, or accident lost to the use of reason, or from old age, sickness, or weakness, was so weak of mind as to be incapable of governing or managing their own affairs. State paupers, who one is blind, lame, old, or disabled, with no income source or vagrants. The next year, in 1828, the county constructed stone, a stone building which was attached to the poorhouse expressively for the confinement of lunatics. And that's what Rolling Hills looks like. It's pretty cool. Stop. Looks like a church almost. Rolling Hills! Rolling Hills! Asylum, are you coming through today? Those declared insane were also housed at the county home until late 1887. Yes. When the Board of Supervisors voted to send persons suffering with acute insanity elsewhere in the state. So the poorhouse known as the Jesse County Poorhouse, or the county home, was also a self-sufficient working farm, spanning over 200 acres, providing fuel and food for the entire establishment. The actual cost per person was very low, amounting to a dollar per week per resident. Many of the residents also crafted things to sell. The farm workers raised holsteins, pigs, draft horses, chickens, and ducks, vegetables, and fruits. They canned jams, jellies, and meats. They also manned a bakery and a wood shop where coffins were made for use as needed and for sale to local mortuaries. Damn. Uh, when an inmate grew old or very ill and died, the county buried those who had no family, and the remaining records indicate there was once a cemetery on the property, but there are no records to show that there was. At a meeting in 1886, the minutes state, the burying ground we have improved by building a fence in front and grading and leveling the ground as much as we could to be done without injury to the graves. Hmm. So, maybe there, there was burial on the grounds. As times passed and the gravestones crumbled, the cemetery's location became obliterated by roots, weeds, grass, and forest. What was that? No one tended the graves, and all who died there were forgotten. Oh, man, that's horrible. Are there any forgotten spirits from the Rolling Hills Asylum that need any help? Because we can say a prayer for you guys and help you out. I don't need to be there. I'm there just by looking at that picture. Is there anybody at Rolling Hills Asylum who needs help? I gotta have a left side. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish this reading, which is only like another half a page. I think. Yeah. And we're going to help you if you want it. But you got to tell me you need the help. Okay, the haunting. Since the closing of Rolling Hills, an interest in evidence of paranormal activity has attracted considerable attention. The vacant red, red brick building estimated over 55,000 square feet of living space is said to echo where the heartache and desolation of the insane that lived there through the years can still be heard. <clears throat> A huge building still looms on the empty land, defiantly outliving most everything in sight, including the local residents. The decorative cupola sits atop of the soaring roof, and many of the windows of the dormers are broken, adding to the spookiness of the sprawling edifice. Periodically, paranormal experts have attempted to record and film any ghosts still lurking in the corners. The hallways are like a stop-still photography, with gurneys paused en route and an empty walker standing hesitantly as if waiting for its owner. But they do use those for investigators, and they do say if you sit in it, you will get pushed down the hall. And I don't know if there is any actual evidence of that online, but I've heard it and heard it and heard it. But without evidence, you can't say it's true. The kitchen seems prepared for dinner guests, 
The banging of pots and pans and the hiss of steam from the kettle, the floors still gleam in sections, almost whispering by themselves without a squeaky whistles of the nurse's shoes. Um, so this is just stupidness. The curiosity and the eagerness will continue to explore. He's just trying to make it spooky at the end. There's nothing really here to, to read. So, Rolling Hills, where are you at? Are you here? Spirits of Rolling Hills. If there are any spirits from Rolling Hills who need help, who are lost, who are sick, who are confused, we're gonna call on a white light to bring down guides, angels, and helpful spirits to take those spirits from Rolling Hills and send them back up to be with their families and loved ones. Can we do that? And what I'm going to do is envision that white light coming down over top of Rolling Hills, all around it, engulfing the whole building. And you guys, all you have to do is look up and go up. Anybody from Rolling Hills who's confused, who needs help, who doesn't want to be there, you look up and you go up. That door is open for you. If there's anything holding you back, anybody there that may be holding spirits back, we're going to ask for guides and angels to please push them aside and allow for those spirits to go up their own free will back up. Do you hear me? So we've got we've got a room in Rolling Hills where there is an angel in each corner. Guarding that room and there is light in the middle of that room and it goes straight up to heaven. I see one going. I'm like zoomed into a room. I don't know what room I'm in. But I see a spirit going up. There's another one waiting. Everybody go up who's going. Don't be scared, go. How many went? Three? I saw two. All right, three went. That's awesome. Are there any more that need to go, yes or no? No, I'm gonna take that as a no. Thank you, we're gonna close this session now. We're gonna close that room off. Angels, thank you. I heard clapping. That's fucking awesome. Thank you guys. Goodbye. And that's it you guys. I know this was extra long. But I did want to. I did want to have a little backstory here as to what I w was doing. This was something that was on my mind since I read it the first time. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Hey, happy holidays. Even even you, and all your different profiles. <laughs> Goodbye.